Is the 797 a revolutionary aircraft? Well, let's find out. Hey yo captains, how's it going bros? And welcome to another analysis video. So I know that you guys love analysis videos, so I've decided to release two per week. Now George from Avgeek will be releasing videos every Saturday and I'll be releasing one every Sunday. So make sure you check out these videos and if you have any suggestions for future videos, then let us know in the comments below and we'll look into it. By the way, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to George for collecting the information for this video and he'll also be producing it. So thank you so much George for your efforts. Anyways, the Boeing 797 is the all new middle of the market aircraft, which doesn't really exist yet. Although one key airline has shown heavy interest in the aircraft, which is Norwegian Air. Now this is a big deal as budget airlines have to pick their aircraft incredibly carefully to work out the most cost effective aircraft to buy. Now I strongly agree with this decision, but why is it that an airline which already has 28 Boeing 787s want to pick the 797? First off, I'll quickly go over what the 797 is and its specifications. It's basically a twin aisle aircraft which will have a capacity between 220 and 270 passengers with a range of 5,200 miles. Now this range and seat capacity fits perfectly between the single aisle 737 MAX and the wide body twin aisle 787 Dreamliner. Also their ranges relate in the same way. The 737 has a range of 3,800 miles and the 797 will have a range of 5,200 miles and the 787 can fly over 8,000 miles. Now at the moment there's no aircraft which fills this gap besides the 757. However, the plane is getting very old. The 757 has a range of over 4,000 miles, so it can reach most destinations in Western Europe from the US East Coast. Now the 757 is a relatively small single aisle aircraft, which can carry up to 200 to 295 passengers. United Airlines take advantage of this by operating the aircraft out of their newer hub to European destinations. Now since it's a small aircraft, it's pretty much guaranteed to fill seats. So instead of operating a larger twin aircraft like the 787 or the 777, airlines just use a 757. Now from the newer cub, the aircraft flew to low demand destinations like Edinburgh, Birmingham and Shannon in Ireland. As I mentioned earlier, the 757 is getting very old and it was in production from 1981 to 2004. So some of these planes will be over 30 years old. Now the 737 MAX 10 can hold just over 230 passengers but has a limited range and the 787 can carry over 350 passengers but has an unnecessarily high range. So you get the difference right? There's no aircraft to fill this gap besides the 797. Now like I said before, the 757 currently operates many transatlantic routes from the east coast to US to low demand destinations in Europe. However, the 797 with a range of 1500 miles greater than the 757, it will be able to fly even longer low demand routes such as London to Renault. Now the 797 will have more composites than any other Boeing passenger plane and new engines which will allow for ultra efficient flights. Now Pratt & Whitney and Rolls Royce have both offered engines for consideration. Pratt & Whitney are looking into upgrading a geared turbofan engine it already makes, the P1000G, whereas Rolls Royce is promoting an in development geared turbofan engine known as the Ultrafan. Now this is exactly what Norwegian wants. The CEO of Norwegian said that they were very interested in the new twin aisle plane and they definitely wanted to be first to receive the aircraft. Now Boeing used the Paris Air Show in 2017 to reveal first details about the jet. United, Alaska Airlines and Delta Airlines have all expressed their interest as well. Now the CEO has said that the 797 would be capable of flying around 250 passengers, low cost from London to low demand cities like Pittsburgh and Memphis or from their base in Scandinavia to many Asian destinations. It's also worth noting that the 797 has low enough costs that budget airlines can operate it effectively. So guys, that's all for now, but if you want more information about this, then head over to avgeek.news. The link will be in the description below, and the website has great articles as well as interesting analysis videos. So if that's your thing, then be sure to check it out. And if you have any opinions on this topic, then let us know in the comments below. Also your suggestions for any future videos. Remember to like and subscribe guys and hit that notification bell and I'll see you captains very soon.